Hello guys and welcome back to another satisfactory guide and today in response to your demands we have the encyclopedia of over 30 tips which we're going to do hopefully in under 13 minutes for building super neat and beautiful factories in satisfactory update 3. So before we start if you do find this video helpful be sure to hit the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe. I also want to mention that this guide as well as others will also be posted on our website satisfactorytips.com when we launch it at the end of May this year so do check it out. Anyway we've got a lot to get through in the next 13 minutes and some of my favorite tips are right at the end so let's keep it short and jump right in. So number one our first tip goes without saying but in case you don't know Always build on foundations for both organization and expansion. This is the only way to grow a big factory, let alone keep it clean. Now when using conveyors, try to stick to right angles as these look super clean. They're easy to do with the magic number two. Just place down a conveyor pole two steps from the next conveyor pole like so or you can use the mouse wheel to position the right turn. In regards to both conveyors and wires, where possible, do not clip anything. It's definitely easy to build a factory, but if you want to have a clean factory, avoid clipping where possible. Four, plan in advance where parts will be manufactured, so they're near the required recipes, making logistics easier. For example, build a versatile framework factory near a steel factory, or computers near a circuit board factory. Tying into the last point, reduce any extra items. Where possible, use the highest tier conveyors. Uh, having one Mark III belt is much cleaner looking than two Mark IIs and a Mark I, so keep everything updated. Six, using a single bus to transport items and then branch out to other places rather than lots of small buses or spaghetti conveyors to transport items. Trust me, one bus looks much better. Also, consider placing buses alongside roads and train tracks as they are the heart of your logistics. Why build a separate bus when you can run them all next door to each other? It's just going to be much easier. On this subject, our eighth tip is to run rails alongside roads or have one above the other. It's the same idea as the prior with buses. Our ninth tip is actually to integrate the last two points and why not have a rail running on top of a conveyor line which in itself is actually above a road. It'll look super clean and intentional, which is what you want with these factories. You want them to look intentionally that way. Another popular one for me is feeding your structures from above or below. It clears up the ground level, making everything look clearer and cleaner. Now tying into this last tip is don't settle for someone's idea work on it, improve on it. I often use manifold buses, but check out this style that Braindog uses in his factories. Everything comes directly below the structure using conveyor walls and then gets fed back below. It's really nice. We also have Papako, who we covered in Fan Factory Friday. The link is above. He uses this beautiful style assembler setup that folds the output back on itself. At 12, use walkways, whether it's above the factory or alongside the, the factory whilst it's being fed by an underfed system. It looks great and it makes everything look cleaner. Also, consider giving your factory a space of one or two foundations between factory sections. It would just open up the space for yourself and make everything look cleaner and more organized. Better yet, we can compartmentalize them with walls in addition to this, as it will allow us to keep items required in just one factory to one factory, rather than tempting you to run a bus through the middle of it. 
Our 15th tip is to color coordinate areas or color coordinate piping. You can do this on the foundations, the walls or the structures, uh, but it will allow you to organize your area much better. After all, copper needing to get to the orange area is much easier to plot uh, the logistics for than copper to that group of undesignated machines that's somewhere in that group over there. The next tip is to use glass foundations and curved foundations together to give your factory a cool looking style. Look at this. You can improve on this by actually making the curved foundations part of your factory's resource bus, which I use here. Tip number 17, use elements like glass walls or glass foundations moderately. It's better to use them to accent parts of the factory, draw the eye to there, rather than to cover the whole factory in glass. Plus, it will save you a few frames as well. Moving on to cables, cables all over the place are a quick way to make a factory look messy. You don't want a web of cables. Uh, have a uniform approach to them. Place uh, a power pole every two machines in the same spot along a line. That's a beginner rule that's very useful. Now a 19th tip works on this further by um, placing poles on the walkways or even on top of splitters or mergers. Um, if it's the look you like, of course, but it'll be one less thing in the way of the factory floor. Tip number 20, as soon as you can upgrade power poles, that means more cable points and less poles, which means a nicer looking factory. So upgrade them. But even nicer looking is tip number 21. Purchase walled power joints at the coupon shop and route them around your factory. You can improve this by placing them opposite the structure power joint and have one for each structure. Now, if these joints are at head height around the factory, why not lift them up a few meters? This is just going to make everything look cleaner because the less you see at head height, the cleaner everything looks. Now, we are going to return to the coupon shop shortly, but whilst on the subject of power, why not run the main grid underneath the factory using the bus that you're transporting items by? Of course, the other option is to use train rails, but inside one factory, the bus method works just as well. What's better than showing cables? Not showing cables. Power structures from below, or you can run the cables along the ceiling if you want, and then bring them down. Now, tip 24, returning to the coupon shop, make use of all the new attachments. Walled conveyor joints are great and allow much tighter conveyor buses than the walled conveyors. Uh, same with pipes, uh, not to mention all the things we've already covered, such as the glass foundations, the glass walls. I could go on. 25. Consider building from one centralized storage location. That way everything flows back to the center rather than building aimlessly outwards and then finding that you have to bring something back neatly to the factory. Tip number 26. Pipes have two ways of being placed. Not everyone knows this, so when you've got the pipe out, hold down R and hover over the build option, allowing you to choose what style of pipe um, look you want. Generally speaking, I go for vertical. 27, pipes can look great underground using the methods we've already discussed, but what about using the foundation frames? They give a great industrial look to the factory and definitely shouldn't be overlooked. Tip number 28, give structures equal spacing. A smelter per foundation or two foundations to a single assembler looks much better than them all crammed together. Uh, that being said, when building super compact factories, think about how you're going to walk around it. A clean, well thought out factory will have planned for you to be able to walk around the factory prior to cramming as much in as possible. Tip number 30, use alternate recipes to reduce the amount of resources you require. In turn, this will reduce the amount of structures and buses that you're going to need. 
And moving on, we have our bonus tips. Consider using mods, mods that give you access to faster belts, for example, will reduce the amount you need. Same for Mark II constructors. Uh, if it doesn't break the game for you, it could really add some cleaner options to your factory. Um, not to mention all the decorational options as well, which actually brings us on to the next one, our final point is to find ways to use normal items in game to accent your factory in clever ways. Use conveyors over gaps in the floor that you can't cover to make automated walkways or use wide doorways as supports for your factory. Get creative and it may just pay off. So there you are guys, over 30 tips to help make your factories look cleaner. Obviously you won't use all of them, but hopefully a handful have helped you out. Now if you did find this video helpful, be sure to hit the thumbs up icon, I really do appreciate it and so will all of the people you help this video to reach out to. And also, if you did like this video, consider hitting the subscribe button, it's free and we do post regular satisfactory content. And don't forget to join us on our weekly Twitch live streams. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching and as always, until next time, ciao for now.